think it has a lot to do with the changing of the writing technique. Like you and I, um, I'm assuming, how old are you, Leo? 35. 35. Okay. I'm 33. So we're brought up in sort of the area of where we weren't moving a whole lot on the pegs. We weren't riding on our toes. You know, we were riding on basically, what is this, the the heel or the, like right in front of it. So we were staying there. So like when you take a, a, a harsh impact, you're not going to tear that Achilles because you don't have the leverage of the ankle here. But if you're on your toes now and you case something, well, now it's going to snap. But there's a lot of guys now that were being taught that if you're not going over, if you honestly sitting down, standing up, you should, if you're not shifting or breaking, you should be on your toes. And so there's just a lot more flexion in there. So I think it's just a, a changing of how guys ride. Cause even in the nineties, guys like Carmichael and them, I mean, uh, Jeremy McGrath, he was the dude that sort of brought in the whole BMX style of soaking everything up because he was a BMXer. You know, he was a champion level BMXer as a kid. And so he brought that whole thing into motorcycle racing. And then Stewart really marketized or monetized him being able to bubba scrub and go sideways. And now we've got this new era with Jed and these younger kids that are just riding on their toes, squeezing real hard with their knees and not, not wearing the neck brace anymore. And so I really can, we talk a, can we talk a little bit about that? Riding the, the people on the foot bags with your foot? Yeah, because absolutely. In my, opinion, in my opinion, you cannot ride with your toes on the bag the whole time. Actually, to me, uh, when Tomek there, his Achilles was a mistake because I have my brother plus two friends here in Brazil who. Uh, broke their, I don't know how you call this bone of your foot, which is really, really hard. Uh, calcaneus. Maybe Rob can help it. Calca yeah, it's calcaneus. not calcaneus, but it's on top. On top. Is that calcaneus? I don't uh, know. Uh, you're talking about, the bottom of, talking about the bottom of the heel or the top of the foot? The top of the foot. Here. Oh, yeah. That, yeah that's, uh, that one I wouldn't know. The little small bones in the top of your foot. Yes. It doesn't matter. It's, yep. uh, it's really hard to break. And my brother just did three surgeries. And he put, he put it on a, a, a prosthesis. I don't know the name in English. Uh, a prosthesis, which is a, a you have to replace it, uh, more or less. And plus, I have two friends who broke the same way, riding uh, in, in the tip of his foot when he they overshoot a jump. They didn't even crash. The the three uh, situations, the three riders, my brother plus two friends, they didn't even crash. They just overshoot the jump and land like this. So when I teach, I give some some lessons for some riders in Brazil. I never teach them to ride uh, on their toes in the middle of the straightaways or jumps or anything. Just in breaking points and turns because you can hurt your foot like that. I never hurt my foot. Okay, like you said, we are old school. It's a different technique now. But to me, it started with Stefan Everts because he has uh, he has a huge foot, and when the rut starts to get too deep, that's what that was taught to me by uh, a German guy who used to train Ken Roxen. So that's mm -hmm. why he started to put his foot in the tip uh, on the pegs because his foot was too big and it was getting caught in the ruts. Even if it is to the left, the ruts are so deep in the GPS, it yep. starts to uh, get his foot. That's why uh, he started to teach that. And I only use the tip of my toes on the foot pack by, uh, in the turns or breaking. What do you think about that, Johnny? Okay. Um, I, they, I was always taught by like Donnie Hansen is you're kind of riding on your arches and then you're only riding on your toes when there's real deep ruts because we've all been in a scenario where the if there's a rut and your ankle is way down there it can catch you and then boom there goes your your leg but watching jet and these other guys stay on the pegs even around corners the only way that they're allowed to do that is by riding on their toes and having their uh, toes pointed inward because typically riding where your feet are are you said it yourself in in a corner being on your toes because if you're not on your toes while 
cornering, now your feet are out. And if you catch a rut or something, well, it's going to twist your knee. And that's how you're going to either tear your meniscus or tear your ACL. So you're riding on your toes. And I never liked riding on my toes for jumping because of that. You could break your exactly. ankles right there. You know, yeah. so in your corners, you are perfect, right? But in the, in the jumps that I'm asking, like Tomek was in a jump. Okay, in the turns you have to put that way. It's easier to make the, the corners. It's easier to make the bike tighter. You feel more the bike. Everything is better. But in uh, during the jumps, I don't think you should ride like that. Even Catanzaro is doing a great job in social media teaching people for free. You guys should go there and check it out. But he teaches. The only thing that I disagree with him, he teaches that. So every time you overshoot a jump, you do like this. And to me, it's not the proper way to ride. It's the only thing I could disagree with for him. Well, it, it's it's inertia, right? And um, that's how sometimes you see guys in motocross don't don't hurt themselves is because they're able to like roll out for a while or like in road racing or anything. When they have this really high speed crash, they can take the inertia and it's pushed out through 700 feet or so. Okay. Maybe I'm over exaggerating a couple hundred feet, but when you have like a quick impact, boom, that's when it doesn't matter if you're going slow or not. If you hit a brick wall at 10 miles an hour, it's probably going to hurt more than if you just fall over at 10 mm -hmm. miles an hour. And I agree with you. If you're, if you're on a foot peg and you're on your arch and you case a jump, well, there's the inertia is going to go through the entire leg. It's mm -hmm. not going to be trapped into one joint that is on your toes to where if you case it, boom, now all the inertia goes to that ankle joint and you snap your ankle or your Achilles tendon. I do believe that riding wise, you should jump and you should land on your heels, but then through the whoops and around the corners and through the ruts, you should be on your toes, but landing on stuff, you should land on your heels. Exactly. I I think the biggest takeaway from all of this on both of your behalfs is there's not a one shoe fits all. That's what annoys me in this last year, the last 18 months. You've got a plethora of riding coaches out there that are saying, don't ever sit down in the corner. Watch Sexton, watch um, uh, Jet, watch uh, Sexton, uh, Roxon. They don't sit down in the corner. So now every riding coach is saying, see, there's no need to sit down in the corner. And I'm like, that's insane. Just like you're saying, you got to move around on the pegs constantly, just like you got to move around on where you're at to try to keep the bike somewhat centered and balanced. And it goes back to that three dimensions of movement. And Johnny, like you said, we're always offsetting velocity. And the worst part about it is the faster we go, the more impactful, no pun intended, these types of conversations become. Because like you were saying, Leo, when, when you have Stefan Everts with a big foot, well, that causes you to have, what's the mother of invention? Necessity. So yeah, if you've got big feet and you're super talented, well, what do you got to do? Try to figure out the, the most efficient way to get through the corner, not dab your foot and blow your knee out. So I love hearing you guys talk about this because Leo, you bring up a good point. You know, if you go and you look at where Tomac was at in that transition, I don't know, maybe he was using his, maybe he slid his feet to the back of the peg, maybe in his way of thinking it allows him to get a little bit more of a pop coming out of it we don't know we weren't in his head and you know Tomac's not a big talker he doesn't like to share what his intentions were but to your point maybe he was transitioning trying to get forward or maybe he had maybe lost a little bit of attraction on his his boot maybe he slid back we'll never know because we have no video exactly. on the right side of the bike maybe but he is but using the, the braces on the ankles now again because mm -hmm. The yep. riders were taking those out so that they could wear brand new boots mm -hmm. and not miss a shift or anything. But now, uh, Tomac is using those. Hey, 